Recently, the real estate world was rocked by a major class action lawsuit in federal court right here in Kansas City. The implications are potentially disastrous, not just for real estate professionals, but for buyers and sellers alike. While it might seem like a story of the little guy fighting back against the big, bad real estate world, the reality is a lot more complicated. Today, I'm breaking down exactly what's happening, why it matters to you, and how it could impact your future. Let's take a trip back in time to understand how we got here. Imagine it's before the 1990s. If you wanted to buy a home, you typically had to go through the person selling it. Yes, the same person who's trying to get the highest price for the house was the one helping you buy it. Then came a change for the better. Buyers got their own agents. This was a game changer because it meant you had someone whose job it was to look out for you and the seller had their own person too. And the way it works was pretty simple. When the house sold, the seller would pay both the agents a fee for their work. This way buyers didn't have to worry about extra costs and the sellers were happy because their homes attracted more buyers. But fast forward to 2019 and some folks started questioning the system. They wondered why should the seller pay for the buyer's agent? Yes, it brought the price up of homes, but that was what sellers wanted back in the late 80s and early 90s. For the little bit that it increases the price of the home, it prevents the buyer from having to come so much out of pocket. So a lawsuit was filed against the big names in real estate challenging this whole setup. The lawsuit filed finally wrapped up in November of 2023 and the verdict was a bombshell. The court said this practice of sellers paying the buyer's agent's commission, it had to change. Now we're talking about a decision that could shake up the entire real estate market, affecting how much people pay for homes, how agents do their jobs, and who can actually afford a house. Some see it as a fight for fairness and transparency. Others see it as a can of worms that probably should have stayed closed. After all, change isn't always a good thing, especially when it messes with something as important as buying a home. Now, now let's dive into the heart of the matter. If you're dreaming of buying a home or planning to sell, this lawsuit isn't just news, it's personal. Now for buyers, it's a new bag of costs. Instead of focusing on just saving for a down payment and saving for closing costs, you've got to think about paying your agent's commission out of pocket, which is often eight to $12,000. Ouch, right? This potential new cost is a big deal. Buying a home is already a financial high wire act for many, and adding the need to directly pay your agent's commission can feel like someone just tied your hands behind your back. Even with real estate appreciations falling back to the three to 4% range, that still has real estate growing in Kansas City on average 12 to $14,000 a year, making saving up feel like you're trying to catch up in a race with others that started a decade or even decades ago. And there's another path some buyers might consider skipping out on having their own agent altogether to save money. Going solo means you won't have a fiduciary ally in your corner. A fiduciary duty is the fancy way of saying that your agent is legally bound to put your interests first. The listing agent, remember, has the same duty to their seller, not you. They're all about getting the best deal for their seller and putting their interests first, not making sure you don't overpay or buy a house with hidden issues. Let me tell you about Sarah, a first time home buyer. She was excited and eager to find her dream home. She finds a charming house listed online and decides to call the listing agent directly, hoping to simplify the process and maybe save some money. Now the agent was friendly and seemed helpful, showing her around and highlighting the home's best features. Now when Sarah expresses her interest in making an offer, the agent informs her that there are multiple interested parties and she suggests that she write a competitive offer above the listing price to secure the home. The agent also hints that waiving the inspection could make her offer more appealing to the sellers. Of course it will. Now caught up in the fear of losing out and trusting the agent agent's advice, Sarah makes an offer that's significantly over the asking price and decides to skip the home inspection altogether. Unfortunately, after moving in, Sarah discovers several costly issues with the property, problems that a simple home inspection would have uncovered, stuff a good buyer's agent would have been able to easily point out. The listing agent did disclose that the Federal Pacific Electric Panel was there, a sump pump had been replaced, and some cracks in the basement wall had been sealed, but the sump pump can't keep up with the water that pours through the basement wall when it rains. A good buyer's agent could easily see the poor grading walking around the outside of the home and would have made her aware of the commonly called out electric panels. Sellers, on the other hand, might initially think that they stand to benefit from this shift. Less obligation to pay for the buyer's agent might sound like savings, right? 
but there's a flip side. If buyers are put off by the prospect of paying an agent out of pocket, the pool of potential buyers could shrink, and fewer buyers means less competition, which can translate to longer wait times to sell your property, and less demand means lower sales prices. Further, dealing with buyers without representation can lead to complications and delays. These buyers might not understand the process, slowing things down or worse, falling through at the last minute because they didn't have professional advice guiding them through the complexities of buying a home. I've seen buyers go buy furniture for their home right before close, and then they no longer qualify to buy the home at all. Now, as we dive deeper into the motivations behind this class action suit against the real estate industry, a critical examination of the attorney's intentions becomes inevitable. The stark contrast between the attorney's prospective earnings and the relatively modest benefits to the plaintiffs cannot be ignored. With the lawsuit settlement ranging from $1.8 to $5.4 billion and the attorneys pocketing a whopping 33% of this amount, one has to wonder where does the balance of justice truly lie? The homeowners and buyers, they stand to gain a mere $2,400 to $3,600 each, pales in comparison to the hundreds of millions that this attorney is going to earn. This disparity raises a fundamental question about fairness and the true beneficiaries of legal battles waged in the name of consumer protection. Moreover, the attack on real estate commissions under the guise of promoting transparency and fairness brings to light a troubling double standard. Real estate agents whose median earnings nationwide only hover around $56,000 for selling an average of 12 homes a year and are often working beyond the typical 30 to 40 hour work week. Their job is a constant commitment with expectations to be available at all hours, including nights and weekends and even during personal time. This reality starkly contrasts with the more structured and arguably less demanding schedules of legal professionals. Yet, it's the real estate agent's compensation that's under scrutiny here, while the significantly higher legal fees in these contingency cases range between 33 and 40 percent, they remain largely unchallenged. It's essential to see the forest for the trees, and real estate agents, they work tirelessly for their clients. They're not just showing houses, they're on call 24-7, ready to jump into action at a moment's notice, be it late at night or during their family dinner. On average, an agent earns only 2 to 3 percent commission for this relentless dedication. This is the reward for their endless hours, their expertise, and their unwavering commitment to their client's best interest. Remember, nothing happens, you don't buy, they get paid nothing. The never-ending pressure, endless work weeks, and often unpaid months or quarters lead most agents to the exit door in less than three years. In fact, 85% are out of the business in three to five years. Now, if you ask an agent what they expected real estate to be like versus what it's really like, I bet all of them will tell you it's a lot harder than it looks and it doesn't pay what they thought. They're not first responders or champion heroes, but they are workers and most are just feeding their families and making it just like everyone else. Now, the real story here, missed by the sensational headlines, is not about real estate agents taking too much. It's to me about attorneys taking a lion's share under the guise of fighting for justice. The homeowners roped into this lawsuit were lured by the promise of fairness and compensation, and they may not realize what deal they've actually struck. Much like voting for a class president who promises more pizza at lunch, the expectations set by these attorneys were sweet words, and they're far from the reality of the outcome. This narrative has picked the wrong Goliath. Real estate agents who put in the legwork and dedicate their lives to serving their clients are being overshadowed by the true giants in this tale, the attorneys, whose earnings from this lawsuit dwarf the efforts and income of those in real estate. It's a classic case of David versus Goliath, but again, the slingshot in this case is held by those who claim to champion the public's cause. As the details unfold, it becomes clear the battle isn't just about commissions, it's about the value of hard work, the essence of fair compensation, and the integrity of fighting for what's truly in the public's best interest. Homeowners and agents alike must recognize the real adversary in this saga. It's time to question the narrative to see beyond the headlines and to understand who truly benefits from this legal battle. Now in the end, it's not just about fighting for more pizza. It's really about ensuring that the promise of justice isn't just another empty campaign promise that's now leaving the class holding just a single slice of cold pizza.